Hi, good day all of you. Welcome to our session. Welcome to our channel, Intelligible Tutorials. In this today's session, now I am going to give the clear information regarding the statistical reasoning in the artificial intelligence. What is the meaning of the statistical reasoning in the artificial intelligence? Normally, we see in the logic-based things, in the logic-based methods we are going to see in the artificial intelligence, they can be represented as 0 or 1 or either S or no or either true or false or either they can be represented as believed false or believed true. Okay. So, sometimes if we have the value of 0.65, Okay, so that can also be treated as the true value because we are getting the probability of the any kind of value as 0.65 that is also can be treated as the true value. Suppose if you got another value that is 0 0.045 that can be represented as the probability value as 0 0.05 that can be represented as the false value like that. Okay, normally uh, this kind of the problems uh, where there is the randomness and prob unpredictability and also for dealing with problems where we could if you had sufficient information and uh, that kind of the things where it is exactly true for such kind of the things we can use. Okay, so this kind of the problems are useful for uh, gaming and uh, other kind of the things. Okay, so for this uh, get uh, for this kind of uh, getting this kind of probabilistic values, we should go for the probabilistic reasoning in the mathematics. Okay, the probabilistic reasoning gives the exact uh, value of the particular thing that is happened. Uh, if it is the 0.67 that equals to one, uh, if it is 0.79 that equals to one, like that. Uh, the what is the exact probability the event has happened? For example, if you cause the person has, uh, um, suppose he is having some, uh, not the person, the gra grass is wet in the yesterday's night. It was wet due to sprinkler on and it is wet due to yesterday there was a raining. So what is the probability of calculating these two events? The probability of having rain is suppose some 0 0.67 and the probability of this uh, having uh, this thing is 0 0.33. So which one can be considered as true? Obviously having rain which is 0 0.67 can be considered as true. So to find out such kind of the problems we need the probabilistic reasoning and this probabilistic reasoning can be used for Bayesian reasoning and as well as the Bayesian belief networks in the artificial intelligence, right? So next we are going to see the other part of this statistical reasoning. What are the basics of this probability theory? Now we are going to see. So in the mathematical approach for processing, uh, normally in the mathematical approach we go for the probability theory, normally it can be used to process some kind of the uncertain information, where there is an uncertain information that can be handled successfully with the help of this probability, st probability theory. Okay, so sample space it is given as x, x1, x2 and so on, xn. So it contains collection of all possible events and that can be continuous or true. The probability number P of Xi can be treated as likelihood of event Xi to occur and it will be non-negative value in the interval of 0, 1. The total probability of the sample space is derived as 1. Normally, for example, we are having any kind of mutual exclusive events. The probability for at least one of them is the sum of their individual probabilities. So the mutual exclusive events having at least one of them is the sum of their individual probabilities. Normally, there, is, there are two different kinds of the probability theory in the mathematics that we are having, the experimental probability and subject to probability. What is the experimental probability normally? The experimental probability is always based on the events frequency, how the frequently uh, the events are occurring and it is determined very analytically using the knowledge about the nature of the experiment rather than through actual experimentation. So what kind of the nature of experiment uh, they are accessing, they are occurring that can be done with the experimental probability. And what is the subjective probability? It is based on the expert assessment. So what do you understand by this experimental probability based on the frequency of the events uh, about uh, nature of the experiment, how frequently they are occurring. Based on that we can estimate this experimental probability and subjective probability normally can be calculated by an expert. So these are different kinds of the probabilities. And now we are going to see the compound probabilities. What are compound probabilities? 
normally these compound probabilities are going to represent the independent events what are the independent event normally the event that cannot affect the other event though and other event also cannot affect this particular event and vice versa we can say those events as independent events okay here the joint probability of the two independent events a and b is given as p of a and b is equal to prob sorry probability of a intersection b is equal to probability of a into probability of b so this is the joint probability now we are going to see how the union probability can be calculated the union probability of two independent events a and b can be described as probability of a union b is equal to probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a intersection b and probability of a plus probability of b uh, minus probability of a into probability of b so a intersection b in the case of a intersection b so this is substituted that is probability of a into probability of b so the union probability uh, can be calculated like this this is the formula for calculating the union probability so we can derive this union probability formula by using the joint probability formula right so the probability of independent events can be calculated uh, like this okay now the probability theory the parts of the probability theory are the domain on which we are working that are random variables and atomic event the complete specification of the state uh, how what is the state it is having and the prior probability and as well as the joint probability so what is prior probability it is calculated by using the degree of belief without any other evidence in the prior probability what do you understand so they doesn't contain any kind of the evidence in the joint probability matrix of combined probabilities of set of variables can be described okay so the matrix of set of combined probabilities of set of variables can be described for example there are three things are there in the probability theory alarm burglar burglary and earthquake so boolean like this discrete and continuous okay so boolean discrete continuous values so this can be worked on so alarm is equal to true and burglar is equal to true and earthquake is equal to false so alarm is ringing because of the burglary is there near to the ship so that's why it is ringing ship alarm can be ring by using only two different things one is the earthquake due to earthquake or due to burglar alarm burglary is there so burglar burglary is near to the ship so that's why ship alarm was ringing okay and uh, alarm and burglary and earthquake so the probability of burglary is equal to 0.1 probability of alarm on burglary is 0.09 and probability of negative alarm is 0.01 and probability of negative burglary on alarm is 0.1 and probability of no burglar no alarm, alarm is equal to 0.8 like that the individual probabilities can be calculated like this and probability theory and next we are going to see this conditional probability probability of effect given causes computing conditional probabilities by using this formula probability of a by b is equal to probability of a and b by probability of b where probability of b is normalizing constant the product rule can be described as probability of a and b is equal to probability of a by b into probability of b so it can be marginalized as marginalizing as probability of b is equal to sigma a probability of b comma a probability of b is equal to sigma a probability of b by a into probability of a okay now let us see another problem probability of burglar on alarm is equal to 0.7 we got and probability of alarm on burglary is 0.9 now probability of burglary on alarm is calculated as probability of burglary and alarm by probability are ala al of alarm that is 0.9 by 0.19 that is 0.47 we got and probability of burglary and alarm is calculated as probability of burglary on alarm and probability of alarm so 0.47 into 0.19 that is 0.9 0.09 and probability of alarm is calculated as probability of alarm and burglary plus probability of alarm and no burglary so that is 0.9 plus 0.1 that is 0.19 so like that we can calculate the probability theories according to the given formulas okay and now we are going to discuss about the condi uh, conditional probabilities and the conditional independence 
independence conditional independence conditional probability spacing approaches and all these things you now we are going to see okay so next uh, what is the meaning of this independence okay when two sets of the propositions do not affect with other probabilities we call them as independent as we have seen priorly how the independency of the things can be represented see describe independent events the events cannot describe depends on cannot affect on one on each other we can say those are independent right so when two sets of propositions do not affect the other probabilities uh, the propositions which are uh, probabilities and those are not affecting the other probabilities we can call them as the independent probabilities and can be easily compute by using compute their joint and conditional probability so the independent probabilities of a and b can be represented as independent a comma b independent of a comma b if probability of uh, a and prob and b is equal to probability of a into b comma probability of a by b is equal to probability of a probability of a on b is equal to probability of a okay so independent of a comma b both are independent what does it says so a is independent on b and b is independent on a if and only if uh, probability of uh, a and b is equal to probability of a into probability of b and probability of a on b is equal to probability of a for example a c moon phase comma light level might be independent of burglary algorithm and earthquake right moon phase and light level are independent of burglary alarm and earthquake then again it might not burglary might not be more like to burglarize house when there is a new moon okay but if we know the light level the moon phase does not affect whether we are burglarized once we burglarize the light level does not affect whether the alarm goes off we need more complex notion of the independence and methods for reasoning about these kinds of relationships what is the meaning of this is the moon phase and light level might be independent on burglary alarm earthquake so moon phase and light level does not affect on burglary alarm and earthquake so light similarly light phase light level also it does not the we know light level the moon phase does not affect whenever the burglar uh, burglary and as well as does not affect the al alarm and as well as does not affect on the earthquake right so like this the, the all two are the independent things they can be uh, they cannot be affect one on another and we need some more complex notion of the independence and methods for reasoning about this kind of the relationships what are the other kind of the independence relationships now we are going to see here we see the conditional independence in the absolute independence a and b are independent if a and b is equal to probability of probability to probability of b equivalently probability of a is equal to probability of a on b and probability of b is equal to probability of b on a here we can say a and b are conditionally independent in the given c if mm, probability of a and b on c is equal to probability of a on c into probability of b on c let us decompose this joint distribution that is probability of a and b and c is equal to probability of a on c and probability of b on c and probability of c so we can represent the decompose this joint kind of distribution into this particular form okay moon phase and burglary are conditionally independent given light level and conditional independence is weaker than absolute independence but still useful decomposing the full joint probability distribution okay so conditional probability is considered as the weak independence uh, than the absolute independence but still useful in decomposing the full probability distribution so how they dependent or how they independent based on some conditional okay so conditionally independent means if a and b are dependent if a and b is equal to probability of a and probability of b this is absolute independence so conditional independence on given c we are representing the conditional dependence on a and b and c so probability of a and b by c is equal to probability of a by c into probability of b by c so we can decompose this like this the probability of a and b and c is equal to probability of a on c into probability of b on c into probability of c so we can say how we, oh, the conditional independence is weaker than the absolute independence but it is used to decomposing the full probability full joint probability distribution okay so this is the conditional independence
things. So what are the uh, conditional probabilities? Conditional probabilities, other things relevant to the conditional probabilities. Conditional probabilities describe the dependent events. Conditional probability of a given that uh, event B has already occurred. So probability of A on B is equal to probability of A intersection B by probability of B. Okay, so the con probability, conditional probability depends the dependent events and as well as the conditional probability of the event that is already occurred and as well as also show the uh, con uh, how they are uh, dependent on each other. Okay, so in the statistical approach, one more thing apart from this conditional probability we are having is Bayesian approaches. So what is a Bayesian approach normally? derive the probability of an event given another event okay so often useful for this Bayesian approach is derive a probability of an event given on another event normally this can be used to solve the uncertainty and as well as this can also be used to solve the diagnosis it can also be useful for diagnosis problems okay for diagnosis uh, kind of the problems this can also be used If X are observed effects and Y are hidden causes, we have a model for how causes. Uh, uh, see here, if X are observed effects and Y are hidden uh, causes, we may have a model for how causes leads to effect on probability of X on Y. We may also have some prior beliefs about the frequent occurrence of probability of Y which allows us to reason uh, abductively from effects to cause probability of y on x it has gained some importance recently due to advances in the efficiency but more computation power is available and it is considered as one of the best method we will see this bayesian approach in the coming video now we have completed all these conditional probabilities independence and pro importance of the probability theory in the statistical reasoning Remember, in the statistical reasoning, the conditional probabilities and the probabilities and as well as the Bayesian probabilities are all the important things which are used to solve the uncertainty kind of the problems and as well as uh, used to solve various kinds of predictability techniques, right? So in the coming class, we see the Bayesian approach of this uh, uh, statistical reasoning. What are the Bayesian rules, Bayesian approaches and all these things we see. So if at all anybody didn't subscribe my channel, please subscribe my channel, Integrable Tutorials. Thank you. Thank you one and all.